before the video starts, I just wanted to show you guys this amazing Gyotaku of my 47 pound Lua. It's kind of relevant because it has something to do with the topic I'm going to be speaking on today. But this was done by a guy named Jason. His Instagram is shoot print feed. It'll be in my bio, or sorry, in my description below. For those of you who follow me on Instagram, you've probably already seen it. But just look at how detailed. Truly amazing work done, and I'm really, really happy with how this turned out. This is the best way to remember your fish. Photos are great, but this is like a literal life-sized print of your fish, and it's it's just, it's really cool. So if you guys have a fish that you really want to remember, um, there's a lot of great guys out there, including Jason, um, and they do a really good job, so I highly recommend doing these and then I highly recommend um, Jason as well to help you guys out and yeah I just wanted to show you guys just really really beautiful work done how's it going everybody welcome back to another video today uh, I got a different video for you guys today it's not any new footage or anything like that sorry I couldn't get any this weekend the conditions were really nice and everything um, low swell on the east shores and the wind was really low but I just I went diving um, I didn't end up shooting anything though because uh, I went back to a shipwreck um, with my friend Hunter and there was just it was really dirty for some reason and we could hardly see the bottom but yeah we didn't end up shooting anything so I thought I didn't want to go um, a week without letting uh, filming a video for you guys so I got a special video for you today I'm gonna be talking about how you can shoot fish shoot bigger fish um, in caves and stuff because it is pretty risky it is um, a lot of people lose uh, shafts and bend their shafts and uh, gear all kinds of stuff like that they lose a lot of stuff and they lose their fish um, when they're shooting stuff in holes and it happens to everybody um, even the best of the best lose fish sometimes but here, I'm just going to be talking about some things that I do and some things that I've done in the past and things that go through my head when I'm trying to uh, shoot a fish in a cave, especially a big fish. So there's only really two types of big fish um, that live here in Hawaii that like to hang out in caves. I mean, there's tons of fish that live in caves, but like they're not, they're not big and they're not uh, a risk of um, losing all your gear if you shoot them. So there's Ulua's and there's Omilu's. Most other jack species that do get big here in Hawaii, they tend to not hang out in holes like big yellow spots and stuff, big pao pao's, big um, um, budagachis, stuff like that. They don't usually hang out in caves, kagamis, kahalas, all of those guys. And obviously fish that hang out in caves, they're gonna be reef fish. So um, you're not gonna see any pelagics in there or anything like that. So it's really just those two. Um, of course, there are ex very rare exceptions. Um, I have heard stories of people seeing kamanus in caves, which is just, I can't even imagine that. But yeah, so omilus and uluos, those are your two, the two fish you're gonna see most often in a cave. And um, when you're looking for caves, they're gonna be big and they have to have a lot of space underneath usually. Sometimes omilus, they will be in like a lot smaller spaces than whites, but the whites, they definitely need a, a bit bigger of a space on average. Um, but for omilus, they, it can be a pretty tight space. Uh, I'll show, you'll see in some videos that I have um, of them being in a relatively small cave, but still, there's still a good amount of space underneath. And another thing too that makes uh, in Ulua hole, in Ulua hole is usually it has one entrance and one exit so that it it's usually something that goes through something where there's more than one way to get in and out because um ulua's and big fish like that they usually feel more comfortable in that kind of environment and so they'll be in those caves and their ulua's are actually nocturnal so whenever they're in there they're kind of just resting um before they hunt in the evening and at night those are the kinds of things that you'll be looking for when you're looking for an ulua hole and then um, I'm just gonna go over some things that I do um, when I find the, those big jacks in the caves uh, to increase my chances of success of landing the fish. And hopefully it helps you guys to, um, when you do run into these situations, hopefully it helps increase your success rate. So this first clip is just a clip of Hunter looking into an omilu hole. Just, I just wanted to show you guys kind of what it looks like when you find one of these holes. As you can see, there's a good amount of space underneath. There's a lot of ways to get in and out. 
and Hunter unfortunately doesn't get a shot on this one but yeah so that's kind of what the holes are gonna look like and in this next clip this is actually my first omilu that I ever shot or my first big omilu sorry um, that I ever shot in my life and it was a really long time ago I think a lot of you guys were probably not even around when I put this clip on my YouTube channel but here it is so he's this is one of the exceptions to the rule I guess that um, that big jacks need a lot of space because this hole actually isn't that big and as you can see when I get down there I'm kind of sneaking my way over uh, not dropping right on the hole and then uh, as you can see there's not a lot of space under there there is more than one way in, way in and out but there's not a lot of space so he, usually they're kind of not in that much that tight of a space but for some reason this guy just happened to be there and i got lucky um my shot ended up stoning it so that was my first omilu that i ever shot and a lot of it was kind of luck just being in the right place at the right time so in this next clip i'm just gonna freeze it real quick so as you can see there's a lot of space underneath this hole this is actually the same hole that i showed in the first clip that hunter took and I didn't see anything in there at first. You can't really see anything right now, but I grunted a few times, which is a technique that you can use if you're not seeing anything immediately. It can kind of draw things in. So if you find a nice hole that looks like it should have Ulua's, just try grunting and they might come around. I grunted a couple times and this guy comes flying around from a, a spot of the cave that I couldn't see. And I did a big no-no here. Luckily it turned out okay, but I really rushed that shot um, as he was flying by I kind of just pointed and shot uh, and that's something you definitely don't want to do but I, luckily this worked out uh, in this case because Hunter goes right down there and he yanks that thing out of the hole but that's how you bend your shafts and lose guns lose gear but luckily this turned out okay so that's something you don't want to do. Don't rush your shot. Take your time. And I'll show in the next clip, I believe, um, a, an exa a better example of how to take your time and stuff. But yeah. So I got, a, I got a decent shot in the gills. But even still, that's a fight that can end up in a lot of lost money. And that's something you want to avoid as much as possible. And you avoid that by taking your time. That's, that's really important. It's kind of hard sometimes because you might get excited. But... It's very important that you take your time. This next clip is a clip that a lot of you guys are probably already very familiar with. It's my first Ulua, um, but I managed to string together all of the techniques that I learned over time and put them together and land my 47 pounder. So I'm dropping down, the current was ripping uh, and a lot of times when the current is ripping, that's when they'll be in their holes. Um, but yeah, I land a little bit away from the hole. I want, I'm want. i kind of trying to sneak my way in there because a lot of times if you land right on top of them, they're going to get spooked and they'll swim away. But um, so I'm crawling my way over and I look in the hole and I'm just going to freeze the clip right here. So as you can see, there's a ton of space in this hole and there's a bunch of Ulua's inside and uh, the current was ripping. So they, that's probably why they were in there. And a lot of times Ulua's, they'll be really docile and they're not afraid of humans because they're so big, but even still it, they can flip that switch really quickly and um, they'll spook out of there. But as you can see, there's a ton of space in that hole, a lot of Ulua's inside, and it's basically just a big archway. Um, and a lot of space for them and as you can see I tried to line up on that big one but I grunted a couple times and like I said earlier that's a really great technique to bring uh, these big jacks in um, and as you can see this smaller one comes up to me he's like a 20 ish pounder but if you if you look where I'm aiming I'm not I don't have a stone shot now this fish came right up to me 100% in range but I didn't take the shot because I wasn't confident that I was gonna it was gonna be a stone shot so I and it was a fight that I didn't want to have to deal with considering that the current was ripping and everything and I would probably lose a lot of gear um, just because it was deep as well so 
uh, all likelihood I would have broken a few things and lost the fish so definitely didn't want to rush that shot even though he came right up to me and I was super excited seeing all of these Uluas in the hole um, I just I didn't take the shot uh, in fear of losing all my stuff and that's something that's pretty important especially when you're dealing with a fish as strong as an Ulua uh, you want to kind of take your time and you don't it's not worth it to rush that shot and then lose all your stuff and your fish um, even though it may seem like it's a perfect shot, uh, even if they come right up to you like this, uh, it's not always a good thing to just pull the trigger because a lot of times that does not end well. So I basically let this guy go. Um, I was trying to track him with my gun, but he was just moving too quick. And right after this, he takes off. Um, so it's a really good thing that I didn't pull the trigger on him. So I let that one go and then I grunted again. These three come up to me. I line up on the one I want. And I made sure that I it was a stone shot. He was coming right at me. So I knew that if I, as long as I aimed it right, I get a stone shot. So really quickly, just to recap everything that I talked about. So one important, the first important thing is make sure that you don't drop right on top of the hole because that can scare them away, it can spook them. And even though usually big uh, trevallies are pretty calm and docile, they can be spooked pretty easily um, just like that. So make sure you sneak your way over to the hole, wherever it may be. And second thing, don't rush your shot. Be very, very selective and very picky about which shot you take because a bad shot placement and a rush shot can lead to lost gear, lost fish and just overall just not a good situation to be in a fight that you don't need to uh, deal with and overall it just um, increases your chances of landing a fish if they're out of the hole and they're swimming they're free swimming they come up to you on the bottom you can take uh you have more grace of what shots you can take because they don't have as much chance of ripping off and uh, you losing it just because there's not as much structure in their immediate vicinity for them to wrap around, get stuck under, all of that kind of stuff. So uh, don't rush a shot, sneak up on them, and uh, good luck. So I hope this helps you out. Make sure if you enjoyed this video and if you found it helpful, please leave a like and subscribe. I really appreciate it. It helps me produce more videos and it really, um, I just really appreciate you got your guys' support and it really helps out the channel a lot. So thank you guys for doing that. Um, and yeah, that's all I got for you guys today. Next week, I will have new footage, I promise. But until then, I'll see you in the next one. Shoots everybody.